But hey, as I said, my name is Kim. I've been promoted up from the minor leagues to the major leagues today. Um, I actually disagree. The major leagues are downstairs, but that's all right. I'm so glad to be here with you guys. So I really like this comedian guy named Jerry Seinfeld. Um, I've been told for many, many years that my husband is a lot like him, that if they close their eyes, they feel they are listening to Jerry Seinfeld instead of David. Um, I do that often. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but Jerry Seinfeld was quoted to saying that writer's block is not real. Writer's block is not real. There's no such thing. It's just an excuse for not doing your work. And, you know, I kind of wanted to argue with him and say that's a bunch of crud, you know, but, I mean, who can argue with the great Jerry Seinfeld, right? So I actually gave it some thought, and I started to think about it, and I realized he actually knew what he was talking about. That when you write, now by no means am I a writer, it's always my worst grade in, in school, English, terrible at it, but when you're a writer, you spend time researching, you spend time reading, you spend time thinking, possibly if you're a note taker, you're taking notes, right? So you're gathering information to then sit down and do it. Now, I do plan stuff and put together lessons, and if I do the prep work ahead of time, when I actually sit down and do it, it goes real smooth. If I don't do the prep time, I tend to, you know, look out the window, oh, there's a bunny rabbit out there, or, or maybe I, you know, pick up my phone, what's going on in the Facebook world, right? Because my mind isn't prepared. So I was like, doggone it, he was right. If we don't prep ahead of time, it does affect where we're at. And one of the things I wish I knew back in the day was that our decisions affect our future. Our decisions affect our future. Whether it's good or bad, our decisions are like a downstream of what's to come. Now, some of us are kind of going, well, I may be in a little bit of trouble now, so I don't mean to suck the wind out, um, because some of us have made really good decisions. So we can pat ourselves on the back. Good job. Good job, right? I made some awesome decisions. I'm going to be set up for life. And some of us are going, oh, crap. <laughs> I'm in some serious trouble, right? But that's okay. That's really okay. It, it really is. I argue that we're in a better spot in life if we're sitting here going, oh, crap. Those decisions were terrible, right? Because when that happens, we tend to go, we can change them. But if we're stuck in the, I did good, we're comfortable. We're going to stay there. And that's not where Jesus wants us. So think about it. Maybe, you, maybe we've made decisions that we don't like. Now, don't look at your spouse, don't look at your children, because those decisions are a blessing, whether you think it right now or not. But maybe you took a job because it was one that made money, and it wasn't one that gave you joy. Maybe you hung out with people because, oh, they're, they're cool, and I want to be cool, but I know what they're doing isn't right. Maybe... I, we didn't tell people about our faith in Jesus Christ because we were afraid of that backlash that the world is giving right now. But that's okay. It's okay to be in that spot. I truly, truly argue that that's the best spot to be in because that's the spot Jesus can use us in. When we all have, oh, crap moments, and the perfect person to talk about is Peter. Peter is one of Jesus' disciples. He walked with Jesus for three years, right? And let's face it, Jesus, Peter had a whole lot of oh crap moments. And we're going to take 60 seconds and run through some moments of Peter. But I encourage you, man, grab your Bible, open up to the New Testament. You're going to find stuff about Peter. And if you're like me, you can learn stuff because I'm a lot like Peter. I liked my foot in my mouth a lot. So, you, but you can learn from Peter, right? But so Peter was an ordinary fisherman. Well, 
maybe not ordinary. He was actually an expert fisherman. His family had a very successful fishing business. You could say that his dad's decisions years past came down and they were made a successful family, a successful family business, right? He didn't have a no crap moment. Then Peter had the best moment in the world. He saw Jesus and Jesus said, come follow me. And Peter being Peter dropped everything and followed Jesus. Great moment, right? Not a no crap moment, an awesome moment. Then Peter got to witness Jesus do some pretty cool things. Peter saw Jesus heal people. He saw him cast demons out of people. Peter saw Jesus bring people back to life. Again, awesome moments, right? No oh crap moments, right? Peter was doing great. Peter also got to witness Jesus walk on water. How cool is that? And then Peter, out of all of the disciples, said, Jesus, tell me to come out there. And Jesus did, and Peter started walking. Great moment. And then Peter took his eyes off Jesus and started to sink. Oh, crap. (laughs) Right? He's sinking. But the cool thing is, is one of my favorite verses, is it says, immediately, Jesus was there, taking Peter up out of the water. Right? So, yeah, it was an oh, crap moment, but... Jesus was there. Then Peter rebuked Jesus for predicting his own death. Peter fell asleep in the Garden of Gethsemane after Jesus told him, stay awake and keep watch. Peter denied Jesus three times. Talk about some oh crap moments. I don't think those compare to ours, do they? I mean, well, probably they do. We're probably no different, are we? My biggest guess, and I don't know because I wasn't there, but my biggest guess is Peter's most regretted oh crap moment was the time he heard the rooster crow when he denied Jesus for the third time. Listen to what it says in Luke twenty two sixty one. At that moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Suddenly, the Lord's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even knew me. I can't imagine what Peter was thinking when Jesus locked eyes with him. I really can't. My best guess is, oh crap, I'm busted. You know, like when you were a kid and you snuck into the house and you thought you were really cool. And all of a sudden, there's your dad looking at you. Oh, crap, I'm busted, right? That's where Peter was at. He denied, not, he denied knowing Jesus. Now, he didn't have much time to think about that. It all came, it was all going real quick at this point. I encourage you to grab your Bibles and read later on. Read it. Find out how fast it was actually going. But he really did not have a whole lot of time in his oh, crap moment to spend thinking about it. But Peter had a decision to make. Was he going to allow that to define who he was? Or was he going to use it to change who he was? You see, Peter messed up. And I have to guess that there was a whole lot of shame there. And we have to ask ourselves the same questions Peter probably asked himself. Hey, I messed up. What am I going to do now? Am I going to accept it? Am I going to just accept the oh crap moment and live with it for the rest of my life? Am I going to change the oh crap moment? Am I going to hand the oh crap moment over to Jesus? What am I going to do? And, and, you know, I think we're the same way. Go back to a few seconds ago when we were talking and everybody said the oh crap and everybody had moments that came to their mind. So what were they? What were those moments? So I ask you the same question. Are we going to allow those moments to define us? Are we going to allow that decision to be who we are for the rest of our lives? Are we going to live in shame and hide from the world? Are we going to accept it? Accept the fact we made a bad call. Guess what? I'll give you a little thing. We all do. 
There's not one person in the room who hasn't, right? Are we going to give it to Jesus? Are we going to change from it? Listen, Jesus does not want our oh crap moments to define who we are. He doesn't want them to define who we are. I am not the mistakes I've made in my past or that I made this morning for that matter. I'm not. Now, do our decisions affect our future? Yes, they very much do. Everything we do has an effect. Think of the movie um, Back to the Future, right? Everything he did changed the picture, right? Changed the future. But we can't forget that we serve a God. We serve Jesus who is amazing and anything is possible through him. So even if we have made bad choices and bad decisions and it affects our future, he can change our future. He can change, not define. Those bad choices, those bad mistakes, those oh crap moments are to change us, not to define us. So there's this iconic movie. I would like to say an old movie. Some of you might be offended by that. The Breakfast Club. (laughs) The Breakfast Club. So it's a great movie, isn't it? The Breakfast Club. In The Breakfast Club, there are five people, five main stars in The Breakfast Club. And they all had a huge oh crap moment, which led them to be in detention for an all-day Saturday affair. And so as they're sitting there, they are not friends. They do not talk nice to each other. They are not kind to each other. But I think there's a reason why. You see, a lot of times with our oh crap moments, we allow them to define us. So we write them on a little name tag and we stick them on our chest. And we say, this is who we are. I'm this kind of person. I'm a bad mom because my kid did this. I'm a bad student because I failed a class. And that's not who we are. So in the breakfast club, there's the five people. One guy, he's a loner. And he is full of oh crap moments. I don't know if he ever made a non an oh crap moment. Everything he says, everything he does is mean, vile, and terrible. Right? And he's just that oh crap moment kind of guy. He's the loner. Then you have the jock, and he ultimately just does whatever he can to get his dad's approval. He's just putting that on there. I I do whatever so I can get my dad's approval. And ultimately, the loner guy, he just wanted his dad's approval too. And then you had the nerd kid. I probably, I, I can probably relate a little bit more to him than any of them, is the nerd kid just wanted to be seen. He just wanted to be noticed. Right? So that's who he defined himself as, an invisible person who just wants to be noticed. And then you had Molly Ringwald, the pretty girl, who truly just wanted people to love her for who she was and not for the, the, who people thought she was or for the money she had. She just wanted to be loved for who she was. And then you had the emo girl. And if you're not a kid, that means that she wore all black and she was just a little weird. Remember, she like shook out her hair and all the dandruff came off. Put your hand down. Um, right? And so she, she was kind of the emo weird girl, right? And she had that label on. Well, you know, it's kind of cool if I'm going to spoil the movie. I mean, if you haven't seen it, it's 39 years old, so you're probably a little late to the game. But in the movie, they all walked in not talking to each other and holding on to definitions of each other, either their own definition or the definition that they, they've put on for each other. But when they walked out, they walked out changed. They walked out knowing a little bit more about each other. And it may have only been to those five people and it may never have translated into real world, but for that moment, they were changed. And that's what Jesus wants for us. Peter was the exact same way. I mean, man, that guy had oh crap moment after oh crap moment, right? But he was not the same man that he was when Jesus saw him on the Sea of Galilee and said, come follow me. He was different. He was changed. Look at Matthew chapter 16. 
It says, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others say Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter, of course, he's the first one to respond. Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon of John, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Jesus saw the change in Peter, so much that he changed his name. Talk about a change. Did you hear that? Did you hear the change of heart of Peter? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. While others wondered exactly who Jesus was, I mean, these are people who walked with him. They still wondered who he was. Peter knew it. Peter knew it. And Jesus saw the change in Peter's heart. Peter wasn't defined by his old crap moments. He was defined by the change of his heart. Now jump back. Jump back to the rooster crowing. The rooster is crowed. I can't, again, can't tell you exactly how Peter felt. I wasn't there. I would have to assume he felt terrible. Awful. Probably the worst he's ever felt in his life. But... Here's the thing. He did not allow it to define who he was. You see, he was a follower of the Messiah. He was a follower of Jesus. And he did not allow that oh crap moment to define who he was. And how do we know that? When Jesus found, when Peter, excuse me, when Peter found out that the tomb was empty, what did he do? He ran to the tomb. He ran to find his Messiah. He he wanted to know why. He didn't hide. Many times in our oh crap moments, we like to hide. Because I think we're afraid people can see the oh crap moments. First of all, they can't. They can't see them. But I think we get afraid of that. And we allow them to define who we are. Instead of allowing them to change who we are. We don't want them to define us. We want them to change us. Now, Peter, when he had that oh crap moment, he didn't hide. He went back to doing what he normally did. He went fishing. Picked up his reel and rod and he went fishing. Him and the disciples headed back out to the Sea of Galilee and they went fishing. That's what they knew what to do. For us, when we have oh crap moments, we need to know, do what we need to do. Grab your Bible. Grab a friend. Maybe it is going fishing. I don't know. But Peter went fishing. And then while Peter and his disciples were out in the boat fishing, lo and behold, they see Jesus. And Peter, being Peter, jumped out of the boat and swam to shore. Now, I would think the boat would get you there faster, but it's Peter. So Peter, he was so excited and such in a rush to get to Jesus. He didn't think about it. He jumped in and swam to Jesus. You see, he was not defined by the rooster crowing, oh crap, terrible moment. Now, Jesus had a very interesting question to ask Peter when he was there and asked the other disciples. He asked, breakfast anyone? breakfast anyone. Jesus asked them for breakfast. In John 21, 12, Jesus says, now come and have some breakfast. It's kind of odd that he's seeing his disciples and he wants to have breakfast with them. When I was a young girl, a little girl growing up, my dad um, was a very much a morning person. My mother hated the morning Hated it with a passion, but my dad loved morning, and he was always up early. 
And I developed a habit of always getting up early. And um, I would get up, and in our home, it was very quiet in the morning, which was odd, because we have, I grew up with five kids, four brothers and me. So our house was usually never quiet, much like my house now. But my house was never quiet. And, but in the morning time, I would get up in the morning, and I would walk into the kitchen, and I would find my daddy sitting there with his black coffee, that was weird, black coffee, reading the newspaper. And he would always look at me and say, breakfast? Sure. It was never anything extravagant. My dad would make himself some sunny side up eggs, and he would make me a soft boiled egg with toast ripped up in a coffee mug, and he'd mix it all up and he'd give it to me, and him and I would sit and have breakfast together all the time. And like I said, family of five kids, so one-on-one -on -one time with my dad was pretty special to me. I cannot tell you anything we talked about in that time. My dad was a very quiet, reserved man. Um, I was affectionately known as motor mouth as a child and as an adult. Um, so I did most of the talking, right? I, I don't really know what was said. I just know that sitting with my dad in the morning and having breakfast with him was just amazing because it was my time with my daddy. And to this day, breakfast is my favorite meal of the day. And I realized after writing this that that's probably why, because that was a very special time for me. And I can't help but think that Peter had that special time too. Jesus said, come have breakfast with me. And they ate. And after they were done eating, Jesus looked at Peter and he asked him three questions. Well, actually asked him one question three times. Do you love me? Now I teach children, so let's go back. How many times did Peter deny Jesus? How many times did Jesus ask Peter if he loves him? Yeah, I don't think that was a coincidence. I think there was a reason there. I think in that three times... Jesus was removing the pain. He was removing the shame. He was removing the guilt of all those oh crap moments Peter had. And he was restoring Peter to be the man he wanted him to be. He was restoring Peter to be defined by Jesus and not defined by the oh crap moment. I think that's pretty cool. I think Jesus is asking us today, breakfast anyone? Breakfast anyone? How many of us need to have time for breakfast with Jesus? How many of us need to release the oh crap moments and hand them over to Jesus and allow him to remove the pain, to remove the shame, remove the guilt, remove the regret, and allow him to define us who we are. You see, Jesus is saying in Matthew 21, 19, one of the last recorded words he said to Peter, follow me, follow me. And Jesus is saying that to us, follow me. Allow him to define who we are. Allow him to put the name tag on us because I'm pretty sure his name tags are not going to be past mistakes. They're not going to be, oh crap. They're going to be his masterpiece. They're going to be his prized possession. They're going to be his child. We can't live in the oh crap moments. We have to allow him to change us, not to define us. It's time to sit and have breakfast with him. And maybe you're sitting there and you're like, well, I've never had breakfast with Jesus. I've never done that before. What does that even mean? It just simply means sitting with him. It means realizing my life is all about Jesus period. And I want to live that way. 
So that first step, that first breakfast with Jesus, it's admitting that you have sin in your life. It's believing that Jesus died on the cross and that three days later he came back to life. And it's choosing Jesus, choosing Jesus, asking Jesus, forgive me of all those things I've done. And he will. That's the cool thing about Jesus. There's not an oh crap moment that's too big for Jesus. There's not an oh crap moment that him dying on the cross doesn't cover. That's the cool part. Some of us have had breakfast with Jesus before, but it's time to have breakfast with him again. It's time to say, I'm giving this back to you, Jesus. I'm not who that person is. You pray with me? If today's the day you want to start having breakfast with Jesus, I encourage you, to take a minute, and I'm going to pray a prayer. And I encourage you to also pray it. Pray it out loud, pray it in your heart, whatever you feel comfortable with. But make today the day you start having breakfast with Jesus. You simply say, Jesus, I've screwed up. But Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe you rose again. And today, Jesus, I'm choosing you. Please, Jesus, forgive me for everything I've done wrong. And help me make you the Lord of my life. Some of us need to just have breakfast with Jesus. And I encourage you this week to find time. Time that's free of distraction And just sit. Sit with Jesus. Allow him to talk to you. Don't open your Bible. Don't even pray. Just listen. Listen to what he has for you. Spend time with your dad. Jesus, we love you. Thank you. Thank you for loving us through the old crap moments. Thank you for changing us. And not allowing the old crap moments to define us. But thank you for you defining us as your masterpiece, your prized possession, your child. And Lord, thank you for having breakfast with us. In your name, amen.